In the last video, we talked about how the consumer maximizes his utility subject to a budget constraint. We tried to find the highest level of utility given a budget and the prices of goods. What if this time the consumer wants to achieve a certain utility level and he's trying to find how much he has to spend for this certain utility level? In this video, we want to find the expenditure minimizing quantities of goods 1 and 2 for the consumer to reach a specific or a given utility level given the prices. So our, our objective would now be to minimize expenditure, which is equal to P1 X1 plus P2 X2 subject to the utility ux1 comma x2 so in this video we'll use the lagrangian method of solving this so here we want to minimize and using the lagrangian l would be equal to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 plus lambda open parentheses u minus the function or the utility function x sub 1 comma x sub 2 and as our example again we will be using our super typical Cobb Douglas utility function so um, let's say our utility is actually equal to or our utility function is actually equal to x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 and x sub 2 raised also to 0 0.5. So now to solve this, we simply have to plug in or substitute what we have as our utility function into our Lagrangian. So L would now be equal to P1 X1 plus P2 X2 plus lambda, open parentheses U minus X sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 times X sub 2 raised to 0 0.5 also close parentheses and to solve the Lagrangian again we have to take the partial derivative of L with respect to x sub 1 x sub 2 and lambda so partial derivative of lambda oh of L with respect to x sub 1 uh, partial derivative of x sub 2 uh, L with respect to x sub 2 and the partial derivative of L with respect to lambda these would be equal to P1 minus 0 0.5 x sub 1 raised to negative 0 0.5 times x sub 2 raised to 0 0.5 and uh, partial of L with respect to x sub 2 would be equal to price of good 2 minus x sub 1 sorry uh, 0 0.5 x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 x sub 2 raised to negative 0 0.5 and a partial of L with respect to lambda would simply be equal to u minus x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 times x sub 2 raised to 0 0.5 so in order to solve this each of these equations actually have to be equal to 0 since we're finding the minimum so the minimum of the Lagrangian or the slope of the Lagrangian at this point should be equal to zero. So we equate each of these equations to zero. And so what we find is, oh, wait, this should have a lambda with it. Lambda, lambda, right. So this would now be, uh, we're trying to isolate lambda so that um, the two lambdas in the first equation and the second equation would can be easily found or equated. So lambda in this case would actually be equal to uh, lambda would be equal to P1 over 0 0.5 x sub 1 raised to negative 0 0.5 x sub 2 raised to 0 0.5 On the second equation, lambda would now be equal to P2 over 0 0.5, x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5, x sub 2 raised to negative 0 
And so now we have our two lambdas and we can equate them. So now lambda equal lambda, lambda equal to lambda uh, P1 over 0 0.5. I have to make this longer. P1 over 0 0.5 X sub 2 raised to 0 0.5. Since X sub 1 has a negative exponent, I'll move it to the numerator from the denominator. So P1 times X1 raised to 0 0.5 would be equal to p2 x2 raised to 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 uh, x sub 1. And when we cross multiply, what we find is p1 x1, p1 x1, oh, this is also 0 0.5, p1 x1 should be equal to p2 x2. And this right here is the first order condition that uh, we have for minimizing expenditure. So what we want to do is actually to isolate x sub 1 or x sub 2. So x sub 1 would now be equal to p2 x2 over p1. On the other hand, x sub 2 would be equal to sub 2 would be equal to p1 x1 over p2. Uh, now all we have to do left is to um, substitute x sub 1 and x sub 2 into the other first order condition which is the third equation the partial of L with respect to lambda. What we find here is that u my, would be uh, subtracted by uh, first, we'll uh, substitute x sub 1 into the uh, equation, so u minus uh, p2 x2 over p1 raised to 0 0.5 times x sub 2 raised to 0 0.5 would be equal to 0. And so by simplifying this, what we see is, uh, oh, we, we'll... Um, Multiply both sides by P1, just to simplify things. Multiply both sides by P1. And so U times P1 minus P2 raised to 0 0.5 times X sub 2. 0.5 times X sub 2.5 would be X sub 2 to the first power, which is just equal to X sub 2. That would be equal to 0. And since we are looking for X sub 2 we are going to isolate x sub 2 here. So x sub 2 would now be equal to u p1 over p2 raised to 0 0.5. On the other hand, we also substitute x sub 2 into the um, third equation, which is the partial of L with respect to lambda. And so what we find there, I'll just use another color. I'll use teal. So now u minus uh, x sub 1, x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 would be multiplied by p1 x1 over p2 close parentheses to the 0 0.5 power would be equal to should be equal to 0 and so multiplying both sides of the equation again by p2 we find u p2 minus x sub 1 raised to x sub 1 uh, x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 times x sub times x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5 would simply be x sub 1 times p1 raised to 0 0.5 should be equal to 0 so x sub 1 would now be equal to u p2 over p1 raised to 0 0.5 and now what we see here is that our optimal quantities of x sub 1 and x sub 2, so our optimal quantities x sub 1 and x sub 2, are actually functions, are actually functions of u, p1, and p2. Similarly, x sub 2 is also a function of u, p1, and p2.
In comparison to the uh, utility maximization, the optimal quantities for utility maximization, in that case, our x sub 1 and x sub 2, I'll just label that x sub i, was actually a function of p1, p2, and m. When we try to minimize expenditure, our optimal quantities of x sub 1 and x sub 2, or good 1 and good 2, would actually be functions of utility and prices. And these optimal quantities of good 1 and good 2 are actually what we call our Hicksian or compensated demand. Let me write that down. These are called our Hicksian, H-I-C-K-S-I-A-N, or our compensated compensated demand and we'll get to know how these are different to our Marshallian or our uncompensated demand in a different video anyway um, these two quantities since they're called our compensated they are denoted by a letter C as a superscript so if it was our uncompensated uncompensated demand our optimal quantities of good i would have a star but in our compensated demand our optimal quantities would ha have a superscript of c and again when we substitute this into our expenditure we find what we call our expenditure function um, the expenditure function uses our Hicksian demand so our Hicksian demand is actually denoted by e prime. So this is equal to P1, X1, C, or our compensated demand for good one, plus P2, X2, C, our compensated demand for good two. And again, um, X1, C, and X2, C, here we find that both are actually functions of U, P1, and P2. So in reality, e prime is just a function, is just a function of p1, p2, and u. Let me rewrite that. u, p1, and p2. u, p1, and p2. I want us to graph how this expenditure minimization would look like. And to do this, I'll just um, draw our indifference map. So the y-axis and the x-axis. So this would be x sub 1 and x sub 2 again. And so in this case, the consumer has a specific utility level that he wants to achieve. So let's say that utility level is actually this utility level that we will label u not. Okay, so the consumer wants to reach the utility level of u naught while minimizing expenditure. Now, in this indifference map, there are infinite numbers of um, ISO expenditures or lines where the consumer would spend the same amount. So let me just try to illustrate that. So this is one of them. This is another one of them, etc., etc. So there are infinite parallel um, expenditure lines there so what we want to find is the expenditure line that touches or is tangent to the indifference curve therefore minimizing um, the expenditure that the consumer has to make in order to reach the specific or the given utility level so here let me just remove the pink lines here the consumer given this utility level would would consume where this pink line the budget line or the expenditure line is tangent to the indifference curve which is at this point so the consumer would actually consume this much good one and this much good two and let's label this x one c and x to C because these are our optimal quantities of good 1 and good 2. Now this may actually look similar to you. It's 
just the opposite process of utility maximization. In utility maximization, we are given a budget for which we have to uh, maximize utility with. In this case, we try to minimize expenditure given a certain budget line. So if this utility level U0 is equal to the maximum utility level in a max utility maximization problem, so if U0 is actually equal to U star, given the same goods, X1 and good one and good two, with the same prices, P1 and P2, then it must be that the optimal quantity in the expenditure minimization, which is X1C here and X2C here, would actually be the optimal quantity for the utility maximization as well. So X1C should be equal to X1 star and X2C should be equal to X2 star. As such, the expenditure function, the expenditure function E prime should actually be equal to our budget for the utility maximization, which is M. And in this case, what we see is actually the duality, the duality of the expenditure minimization and the utility maximization. Now we have the second method of finding ex the expenditure function given that our maximization and our minimization are dual. We simply get the indirect utility function and solve for M. So for example, if we have V, which is our indirect utility function, V is actually a function of P1, P2, P2, and M. So here we have, let's say, P1 plus P2 minus M, just as an example. So what we find here is um, we simply try to isolate M here. We simply try to isolate M. And what we get is M would now be equal to U, P1, P2, or a function of U, P1, and P2. And this would be actually equal to, this would actually be equal to our E prime. So we can get our expenditure function from our indirect utility function. And from the expenditure function, we can actually use what we call the shepherd's lemma to find our Hicksian demand. So we could use shepherd's lemma, which says that X, I, C, so our Hicksian demand for um, good I should be equal to the partial derivative of our expenditure function. So E, P1, P2, comma U over or with respect to P I. So if we were going to look for the Hicksian demand for good one, this would be X one C equal to partial derivative of E prime, because E as a function of P1, P2, P and U is just E prime over or with respect to P one. The same thing goes for uh, the Hicksian demand for good two, we'll just change the one to two.